In this video, we're going to look at another application of integration, which has to deal with a technique for solving differential equations. Now, many of you will go on and take at least one course in solving differential equations. We're going to look at the simplest case, which are separable differential equations. So separable differential equations can be written as dy dx equals the product of a function which only has x and a different function that only has y. Now, if f of y is not 0, then we can rewrite this as the quotient g of x over h of y, where h of y is just the reciprocal of f of y. And then informally, and we saw this when we looked at exponential models, we can just rewrite that as h of y dy. So we're thinking of dy dx as a fraction. It's not, but it helps us with the exposition. And that's going to equal then g of x equals dx. Now, integrate both sides and solve for y afterwards. So let's look at an example. This is a little bit more complicated than the exponential examples we looked at before, but it's not that difficult. So what am I going to do? I'm going to rewrite that as uh, dy dx equals x over e to the y. Then I multiply both sides by e to the y, and multiply both sides by dx, or form the cross products, and I'll have ey e to the power of y dy equals x dx. Now integrate both sides. I'll find the antiderivative. Now from each antiderivative, I could say that I get a separate constant, right? And I have to say that um, we are a little bit informal in working with these constants. So for example, here, I could subtract C1 from each side, and then I will have a C2 minus C1 on the right side. I'm just going to treat that as a single constant, C. So when using this technique, after integrating both sides, we're just going to write a single constant of integration with the understanding that, yes, I get two different constants, but then it winds up being the difference of a constant, which is just another constant. So anytime we perform an operation and uh, if we multiply a constant, if I were to multiply C by some number, I would just continue to write C. It's still just some constant. That's really uh, all we look at. And for this technique, C is just some constant. If it remains some constant, then we just still write it as C. We'll see more of that in, in the next examples. So now I, the only thing that's left is to solve for Y. So I'll write the equivalent log form. And that's it. There's no simplification I can do. The C is inside the argument to the log, and it's got to stay there. I can't bring it out. Let's look at another example. I've got the quantity y squared plus xy squared times y prime equals 1. So we have to do a little bit of algebra. I'm going to factor out the y squared. I'm going to rewrite the y prime as dy over dx. And now uh, I multiply both sides by dx, divide both sides by 1 over x, 1 plus x squared. I get the following equation, and I can integrate both sides. On the left-hand side, I just use the power rule. And on the right-hand side, uh, I get an arctangent function, and plus a single constant of integration. So let me clear out the fractions here. And you can see that I just wrote C again. Well, technically, it should have been 3C. 
right? Because I multiplied everything by C. But C is just some constant. 3C is just some constant. And so we informally say that the 3 gets absorbed into that C. And it just remains some constant. And then I go ahead and uh, solve for Y. And again, the C is under the cube root sign, and it just has to stay there. Look at a third example where I have to use a exponential, a property of exponents, e to the t plus z. When you look at this, it doesn't look like I have a product of functions, but if I use a property of exponents, I can write e to the power of t plus z as e to the power of t times e to the power of z. And so solve for dz dt. And I'm going to divide both sides by e to the z. Dividing by e to the power of z is the same as multiplying by e to the power of negative z. And then multiply both sides by dt. Now integrate both sides. So I get a... Uh, negative e to the negative z equals negative e to the power of positive t. Let me go ahead and multiply through by uh, negative 1. And then um, I'm going to solve this for z. So I did some steps that I realized in the end were probably extra. I took reciprocals of both sides, so I'd have e to the power of positive z, then wrote the equivalent log form. But then I said, well, I don't like to have the log of a reciprocal. Uh, so why don't I use that log property and make that negative log of e to the t minus c. And I probably could have got there just as fast by going straight from this step and writing the equivalent uh, log form there. But at any rate, um, especially when dealing with logs and exponentials, there's many, many different ways to arrive at the same destination. And uh, these steps got me there. And again, this constant of integration remains inside the uh, natural log function and cannot come out. Well, if we're given an initial condition, we get what is called an initial value problem. So if we know a point on the graph of y equals f of x, then we can go ahead and determine the constant of integration. We get, instead of a family of solutions that we get in all of our examples so far, we have a family of solutions which depend on that constant of integration, we will get a particular solution. So if I uh, look at this example, I'm going to solve dy dx equals the natural log of x over x times y. And I'm told that y of 1 equals 2. In other words, when x equals 1, y equals 2. So first, let's perform our steps. Um, I can write that as y dy equals natural log of x over x dx. Uh, to perform, now when I take the integral of both sides, to find the antiderivative, I'll need a u substitution on the right-hand side. So u will just be natural log of x du equals 1 over x dx. Now find the antiderivatives and change everything on the u side, change that back in terms of x. So I'm going to have 1 half y squared equals 1 half quantity natural log of x squared plus c. So now let's go ahead and use our known point that when x equals 1, y equals 2. The natural log of 1 is 0. And so that will tell me that c has to equal 4. So my solution, and I have to keep this in terms of y squared, because 
I don't really know. I don't have any information if uh, I should be looking at a specific positive branch or negative branch of y. So we have an implicit representation of the solution as y squared equals natural log of x quantity squared plus 4. So a nice application where uh, we can use this technique uh, as uh, mixing problems or salt tank problems. So in this example, we're going to have 200 gallons of brine. Brine means salt water in which 10 pounds have been dissolved. So in other words, you have in those 200 gallons, you have 10 pounds of salt. You have a concentration of the in the tank originally of 10 out of 200. Now we're going to start turn on the top valve and we're going to start adding salt water with a concentration of 0 0.1 pounds of salt per gallon of water per gallon of brine is pumped into the tank. And it's being pumped in at a rate of two gallons per minute. At the same time, we're going to stir that up. So we're going to assume that it gets mixed essentially instantaneously. And by the time it reaches the, the bottom here, where we're going to drain it at the same rate of two gallons per minute, that it is thoroughly mixed. So the question is, We'd like to find the amount of salt in the tank at any given time t, the exact amount of salt in the tank after 20 minutes. And if this process continues for a long time, so several days, how much salt, about how much salt, do we expect to be in the tank? Well, let's define a variable. We're going to let y be the amount of salt in the tank at time t. So we're told then at our initial condition that at time t equals zero, that there are 10 pounds of salt. And our initial concentration is that there's 10 pounds of salt and 200 gallons of brine. So that ratio turns out to be 0.015. So you do have to think about the context of the problem. In this context, I'm starting with a concentration of 0.05. I'm putting in brine that has a concentration of 0 0.1, which is greater than 0 0.5. So that would tell me that the amount of salt in the tank is increasing over time. Why is increasing? Since the concentration of what I'm putting in is more than the concentration of what I started with. So our governing equation is that the change in the amount of salt is going to be the difference between the amount of salt that's going into the tank and the amount of salt that's coming out of the tank. It's a very simple formula when you think about it. We've got this brine coming in at the top. We're draining it from the bottom. And it's draining at the same rate. So that makes the problem uh, simpler. Uh, and so I just need to be able to calculate then the amount of salt that's going in. Well, I've got brine with this amount of concentration. So one tenth pounds for every gallon that comes in. I'm sending in two gallons per minute. So that product will give me the amount of salt that's entering the tank. Now, while that's happening, salt is leaving the tank. And what is its concentration? Well, we don't know. It just depends on how much salt is in the tank at the time divided by the 200 gallons of brine. Remember, the 200 gallons doesn't change because we are pumping in two gallons per minute and we're taking out two gallons per minute exactly at the same time. So the volume of brine in the tank never changes. So this product represents the salt that's leaving the tank. In other words, I have the 
differential equation dy dt equals 0 0.2 minus 0 0.01y. Now I should be able to solve this differential equation. In fact, it's an initial value problem because we know that y of 0 equals 10. Now it's important for us to know that y is increasing, and we're going to see that. That would mean that dy dt is positive, and that means that the expression 0 0.2 minus 0 0.01y is also positive for all positive values of t. So let's go ahead and separate the, the variables here. I have to divide both sides by 0 0.2 minus 0.01y and multiply by dt. Now integrate both sides. On the left-hand side, I'm going to need to make a u substitution. I'll let u equal the entire denominator. And then um, when I write the integral in terms of u, I'll have negative 100 du over u. Now the right-hand side is very similar, just the integral dt. And so taking the antiderivative, I have negative 100 natural log of the absolute value of u. It's very important that we remember that the antiderivative of du over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. On the right-hand side, I just get t plus my constant of integration. So let me substitute u equals the corresponding expression in y. And now this is where it's very important that I noted that y is increasing or that this expression is increasing, which means that I mean, sorry, that dy dt is positive, this expression is positive. So then the natural log, I'm sorry, the absolute value of that expression, since it's positive, is just the expression itself. Now I'm going to warn you that there could be a case where the amount of salt in the tank is decreasing. And in that case, what would I do? If the amount of salt is decreasing, then this expression would be negative and the absolute value of it would be the opposite of it. So I would have to take the opposite if the amount of salt is decreasing. But here it's increasing. So the absolute value is just the same expression. And so now I've got this equation. And I could go ahead and divide both sides by negative 100. You can see that that got absorbed into the constant of integration. And so now the, what's left is to determine what is that constant of integration. Um, well, to do that, I am going to go ahead and uh, first write that as the equivalent exponential function. Here I have e raised to the power of negative 0.01t plus c. I'll write that as a product of exponents. We did this before when we studied the exponential models. And so the e to the power of c, I'm going to replace that with a different constant, a. And I can go further. I can go ahead and solve this now for y. So y would be 200 minus 100a times e to the power of negative 0.01t. So I need to find the value of a. I'll use my initial condition that when t equals 0, y equals 10. So e to the power of 0 is 1. That gives me the equation 10 equals 20 minus 100a which I can solve for a to be 0 0.1. But in my equation here, I don't have just a. I have 100 times a. So why don't I just figure out 100 times a is 10. And so now 
I have answered part A. At time t, the number of pounds of salt in the tank is 20 minus 10 e to the power of negative 0.01 t. Just as a sanity check, does that satisfy my initial condition? When t equals 0, I'll have 20 minus 10, which equals 10. So good. Now that I've got that equation, how can I find the amount of salt after 20 minutes? Well, that's just t equal to 20. And I find that there is 11.813 approximately. That's the amount of salt in the tank. And of course, we can see it's increasing, right? We started with 10. After 20 minutes, we have 11.8. And after several days, so t is very large, right? Um, well, if I take e and raise it to a large negative exponent, that's a really very small number. And so it's essentially, neg we can neglect that term. It is negligible. And so after several days, there's essentially, okay, not, um, exactly, but essentially, I think it has two L's, 20 pounds of salt in the tank. Let's look at another mixture problem. Now we have a smaller tank and it holds only 50 gallons of brine. Uh, it has a concentration of 2% pounds of salt per gallon of brine. And we're going to add brine with a higher concentration, so 5%, and at a rate of half a gallon per minute. And as before, we're going to have a well-stirred mixture. It's going to be drained from the tank at the same rate. So the volume of brine in the tank never changes. It remains constant at 50. So again, we'd like to find a formula for the amount of salt in the tank at time t. And we'd like to know how long do we have to wait until we have a concentration of 5% of brine in the tank. So we'll go through the same steps. So we're going to let y of t be the amount of salt in the tank at time t. Um, at time t equals 0, before we start adding and draining, uh, we have a 2% uh, concentration. And that means that 2% times 50 gallons uh, That'd be 0.02 times 50, or one tenth, 0.1 pounds of salt in the tank. So again, we're just going to use the idea of salt in minus salt out is the rate of change in the amount of salt in the tank. So how much is coming in? Well, our concentration is. 10%, so that's one tenth or 0.1 pounds per gallon. It's flowing in at uh, half a gallon per minute. So the product of those two tells me the amount of salt coming into the tank. Meanwhile, the concentration that's leaving is, well, we don't know, but we know that's we have y pounds of salt in 50 gallons of brine. So that's the concentration that leaves and it's leaving at a rate of one half gallon per minute. So this is the equation I need to solve. And I'll make a note that again, in this problem, y is increasing. And I will need to integrate both sides of this equation. I need a u substitution again. I didn't put down the details of the u substitution because it's very similar to the original one. And so I'll have negative 100 natural log of the absolute value of 0.05 minus 0.01y equals t plus some constant. So I'll go ahead and divide both sides by negative 100. 
Uh, and before I do that, I'll notice that, oh, again, the amount of salt is increasing, so dy dt is increasing. The expression in the absolute value sign is positive, and so um, I think I said dy dt is increasing. I meant to say dy dt is positive. And so the absolute value of a positive number is just that same number. And so now I just get negative 100 natural log of 0 0.05 minus 0.01y equals t plus c. Now I'll go ahead and divide both sides by negative 100. Form the corresponding exponential equation. I'll rewrite the exponential expression as a times e to the negative 0 0.012. And then I will solve that for y. So I just need to find uh, the value of a. And I'll do that before I multiply through by the 100. So uh, if I put n t equals 0, e to the 0 power is 1. So solving this equation for a, I find a is 0 0.049. And so I could go ahead and put that into my equation. I might as well multiply out by the 100. So my equation then for the amount of salt in the tank is y equals 5 minus 4.9 e to the power of negative 0 0.012. So to answer part b, I'd like to know when y over 50 equals 0 0.05. That would be the concentration in the tank equaling 5%. Well, that says find the value of t when y equals, if I multiply both sides by 50 here, 50 times 0 0.05 is 2.5. So I just have to solve this exponential equation. I'll isolate the exponential part and then go ahead and form the equivalent log equation divide both sides by negative 0 0.01. That's the same as multiplying by negative 100. And if I don't like the negative sign, I can use the log property and uh, write the reciprocal of the argument of the log to change the sign. If I take out a calculator, that tells me that after about 67.3 minutes, the concentration of brine in the tank will be about 5%.